Hi guys, I know that um, a lot of girls are texting me, messaging me, DMing me about explant surgery. So I wanted to talk about explant surgery. Um, in 2016, I got my uh, implants uh, put on, um, which is the worst decision of my life. I, I thought that I'm going to be one of those cool girls that I'm going to just fit in the society because I used to like attend multiple uh, conferences, multiple events, uh, and I just wanted to wear things that would fit me right. And I would just, you know, I just feel more confident. Uh, there wasn't like specific reason to get implants. I mean, I just wanted to look better, you know. I mean, if you take a look at the reason why you have to get implants, you're not going to find anything because you simply can just get a lift uh, that would give the same effect if you would get just implants. And so it was just like marketing, you know, I just fell for it and I just went and paid like 10 grand and I got sil silicone um, implants and it just only made things worse. Um, what happened is that two years later, I um, started feeling like symptoms, symptoms such as like I would like feel very nervous. People around me would be like, you know, we can't even talk to you and you're yelling at everything. Like we're just joking and you're yelling at everything. We're eating, you're yelling at everything. You're like, oh, don't chew things like that. Don't talk like that. Uh, don't react like that. And I mean, everything would just annoy me. Uh, like I, 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 I wasn't able to speak to anyone like for more than a minute because that person would just start annoying me. And that is the side I would, uh, that reason seemed to me like, you know, everyone is just annoying. So it's cool. I didn't think that it was because of the implants. I was just thinking that, oh my God, you know, that is just something that, um, you know, people are just, you know, overreacting. Uh, they're just mis misbehaving and they think that I am the person, I am the wrong person. But that wasn't like that. Uh, what happened is just two years later again, um, I started feeling that I'm having a fever, fever that was like 99, 99.5. I mean, if you're in Europe, it's like 37, 37 and a half, and sometimes at 38. I would just sit down at, ha uh, at the house and I would just talk to my friends and I would feel like I'm having a hot flashes. So I was just so nervous, like, oh my God, something is happening. So I started going to the doctors and having like full checkups, like full blood checkups, full body checkups. And I went to a doctor, doctor took all the blood tests and they were like, you know, you don't have anything. Uh, I'm like, what do you mean you don't have anything? Like I'm 27, 28 years old. And like, there should be something if my like temperature, if my body temperature is just raising and it, it keeps raising during the day every times and I don't know why. And you are as a doctor, you cannot find it out. They were like, no, there should be something else, which is we can't find because you're like very, very healthy person. So I was like, all right, you know, whatever, what, what I can do. So what happened later, I went to my gynecologist and I was like, you know, is there something like, uh, because I mean, I, I have to find out. They checked me out, everything was totally good and she was like oh you know maybe you're just having a half flushes because you have to just have like menopause i was like i'm 27 years old what are you talking about menopause uh she's like well yeah that's like i've never experienced that somebody would have like a menopause at 27 years old like which is like well, nothing comes to our mind so i would just start googling everything up and i would just be like oh my god is there somebody who's having like menopause at 27 and that was like google would give me like now uh, -uh you're crazy so what happened is just later on, I just started developing more and more symptoms and I just couldn't sleep. I felt like pain on my chest, like on my back, like I, like it just annoyed me. It just, I, I started feeling like, you know what, I'm just done. And then, uh, I found out on internet D, which is D, uh, as well works in, um, with da uh, my doctor, David Rankin, uh, so I started talking to Dee and I told her that, you know what, I feel really, really bad and like, I hate it. I was like crying and Dee, like, I love her. She's an angel. She really is an angel. I mean, she saved, she saved if, if not her, I wouldn't find my saver, Dr. Rankin. So I, I talked, uh, I spoke to her and I, um, and we, we like, we booked a day for 15th of April. I had to have a surgery on, stop. I had to have a surgery on 15th of April. But then I was like, you know what, D, I can't, like, I, I just can't wait. I just, I, I have to get it done right away. Like, I can't wait till 15th of April. So D just arranged for me something and I got my surgery on 12th of March. And that was the best decision, the best decision of my life. How was the surgery is that I went to, um, one day before the surgery, I went to um, a hospital uh, I met with Maria that works there. Maria is an amazing girl and she's like, oh my God, she's amazing. 
uh, we spoke to her. We were like, I mean, when you go to the hospital, uh, um, to the clinic of Dr. Rankin, you don't feel like you're going to the hospital or you, you don't feel that vibe that is pressuring you, like doctors around you, nurses around you. You're like, cool. You're like, oh my God, it's like my buddies. It's like my friends. So they, um, I mean, I signed things up. So, and then later, and then I went the next day to the surgery. You go in. Uh, you again like the girls gonna greet you they're amazing they're the coolest and we, I would just stay in front of the um in front of the reception I would just talk to Maria like for minutes and minutes and I couldn't just get get away from her then Brittany uh, nurse she's amazing she called me to the room and she she gave me like stuff to change um, and then Dr. Rankin came Dr. Rankin is just the most funniest person I swear, I I didn't feel like, you know, I'm talking to a doctor, doctor that has such a high, high education that, uh, you know, is just going to cut me up. You know, he didn't make me feel like, you know, that because I had many surgeries before and the doctors would make me feel weird, you know, like I would feel like, oh, my God, like this is the person who is going to cut me up like he doesn't like me he doesn't love me what if he cuts me wrong what if like he kills me you know just kind of like crazy things come up to the patient's mind so he was like there in the room and we were just joking i was like i want to like have this kind of things and he was like well you're not gonna have this kind of things you're gonna have like this kind of things i was like why he's like you got tissues I was like, all right, all right, <laughs> whatever. You know, we were joking there. And then Dr. Rankin was like, uh, don't worry, everything is going to be fine. Like, don't worry, things are cool. So we were joking there. He's amazing. Oh, my God. He is the. I've met so many doctors in my life, like so many doctors in my life. I mean, I had a lot of surgeries before. So, um, and I met millions of doctors. And Dr. Rankin is like, and I, sometimes I'm joking with Dr. Rankin. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get one more implant in just for one boop so that i can get explained with you <laughs> so that we have that fun again uh, i mean he's amazing so and then um our, uh, um nurse um uh, arlene she came in and she's like did you have a water before the anesthesia i was like yeah i did she's like oh my god come on <laughs> we were joking she's so funny um so and then Arlene is just so amazing she's gonna like she's gonna put you on sleep very lovingly you're not gonna feel that you're gonna be like Arlene I love you and she's gonna be like I love you too you're gonna be like oh Arlene finally I met you in my life and then she's gonna be like see I'm here with you and you're gonna be like knocked off that's it you're gonna wake up and Arlene is not there so um Arlene and then you wake up and you're like there was my love there was a girl there was Arlene I love her I fell in love with her where is she and then they're going to be like, Arlene is just right now. Lovingly putting asleep somebody else. <laughs> She's such a cool girl. I love her. Nothing. I mean, they put you, like, they put UV, which is like seduction UV, I guess. Like, you don't feel any like anything weird. You just feel good. Um, and that's it. And you feel like, you know, you're just getting good. Like, you, you were having a glass of alcohol, like a wine. Um, you just feel, I mean, you, well, that, that's what you feel like. You're tipsy. And that's it. And then you don't feel how you not get knocked off you don't feel that moment because like exactly i know that many patients are scared of feeling like how you get knocked off but you don't have that moment like getting knocked off it's like you just feel good and then you just fall asleep and it's amazing you don't understand that you feel like you're gonna undergo a surgery you're good don't worry for that and then you wake up you're cool like everyone is next to you you're having fun you're chewing up you're going home and they're all the time like in touch with you I mean, if you're considering getting Dr. Rankin, again, just don't think, don't doubt you're watching this video for a reason. Uh, trust me. I wish I had known Dr. Rankin a lot before than I know now. I choose him a lot earlier than now. And I am so thankful for him for giving my health back. And I'm so happy. You can even feel my vibe. I'm always like joking, having fun. I wasn't like that before with my stupid implants. Anyways, I love you, Dr. Rankin. I love aqua plastic surgery. You guys are amazing. And if you're watching my video, don't even doubt. Get that shit out of your body.